It was all 100% pure wheat. But only one of it was mature. And it's maturity that God wants. But the immature can still be pure. Maturity doesn't mean purity. Okay? You can have mature evil. But you can have immature, pure wheat. The only difference is it can't produce. And you're in various stages. Some of you are very mature in some stages and just growing in others. But we, we don't dig that piece of wheat up and check it out. You're not even supposed to take the chaff off until time. You don't harvest it before it's time. So we have to have patience with one another as we grow and develop. So in uh, Deuteronomy uh, Seven. 7.22, it says that, that little by little he's going to cause them to go in and, and take the land. That we, we need to have that uh, maturity in ourselves. Can we uh, pull up the uh, picture of the pregnant lady? She's Impatience is, is our biggest enemy. She's waiting for that baby. She's waiting for that baby. She can't hardly wait for that baby to come. And then the baby comes. And then for the next year, she loses approximately 200 hours of sleep, they say. <laughs> it was, you see, the thing is, when we actually produce something, now you've got a whole new set of problems. Now you have a whole new set of, of uh, energy that you've got to put out. And so sometimes what God is doing is, is he's being very gracious to us by leaving us hidden until we're developed sufficiently that we can actually carry the life that's in us. We met a man and he told my husband he was an apostle. And so my husband said, well, where are your followers? And he says, well, I have a I have a couple of prayer groups, and I said, so how many people in the prayer group? Well, there's two in this one, and just myself and another guy in another one. And I said, well, generals have an army. You don't have an army. You're kidding yourself. You, you haven't looked at yourself. And this is what God really wants us to do. We're, we're looking at hindrances to seeing prophetically. And one of the biggest hindrances is that you actually won't look at yourself. Children leave it, live in a dream world, and as mature people, we can't. There's lots of names about who has what ministry going around now, but what we really need to do is focus on the fact that God loves us, He cares about us, and He has a plan for us. Whether we have a title or not, it doesn't matter. We need to function. We need to do, and if we're pretending we're doing, then we're actually not functioning. Do the picture of the dam. So one of the things that we need to uh, look at ourselves, if we're going to be honest, is do we have the ability to carry weight? On page four. Can, are, are we running to people for interpretation for our dreams? Are we running to people uh, with our problems? Are we running to people with our offenses? Or are people coming to us? And asking, you know, how do I fix this? What's this situation? What, what's going on? See, what happens is, is that the cream always rises to the top. And when you're ready, you see, you don't need a title. The title will come when everybody is treating you that way and you are actually acting that way. We, we operated as elders in the church for likely... 10 years before anybody ever called us an elder or gave us a title. Uh, so you don't need a title, but you, need to, you do need to carry weight. If you're carrying weight, people will see it. And, and really, that's, that's the key. Jesus grew in favor with God and man. And he's telling us it's time to grow up. We have a very prophetic man in our church. I think the world of him, he has tremendous prophecies. But then he came to me one Sunday very angry at me, and I couldn't understand it. And he said, well, for three Sundays I've come expecting that you would give me a word, and you haven't given me a word. 
And I thought, you can get your own word. <laughs> this is it. We don't have to look to others. We first should go to God ourselves. God is trying to open our ears. Right now, Father, we ask for open, openness to ears, to hear. Yes. Right now, opening ears to hear deeper than they've ever heard before. Open their ears. Yes. Open their eyes to see. Cause them to see what they haven't been able to see before. Cause them to see in the long distance, in the far away. Cause them to see, Father, to dream dreams and have visions, O oh God. Speak to their hearts, O oh God. Where you've blocked your heart, we ask God to open, open your heart. Make it soft to receive again, to receive again. Why don't we repent of not believing some of the dreams? Okay, so we're going to do this corporately. Part, part of what, what uh, Jeannie and I have learned is, is that to repent means to turn. If we're thinking the wrong way, I mean, if we were heading up uh, here to Coal Lake and I suddenly saw the next sign was uh, Fort McMurray, 200 kilometers, guess what? I'm on the wrong road. And there's only one way that I'm gonna get to where I need to go and I'm gonna need to turn. And that's what repent means. So. I feel some of you have gone into a bit of hopelessness. Yes. You can get hyped up for a bit. You can think, but then when reality sets in and you go back home, you let the dreams fade. And then the enemy whispers in your ear and depression comes in and anger comes in. So if we could just stand, and if you would like to do this with us, you don't have to, but if you'd like to, let's repent of dropping the dreams and the visions and the words that God's given us. And the pure in heart shall see. Our ability to see, if you're, if you're wanting to see more of God, then what you've got to do is you, you have to be more pure in your motive for what you want to do. You know, do you want this? so that I'll look good? Do you want to be able to uh, prophesy for somebody so people will know my name? Do you want to be able to, uh, you want to be able to do a miracle so that your ministry will be established? The word says, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see as God sees. They will see what God sees. They will see what is in others that others can't see. They will see and know what God knows. So the purity is needed to see. Not second heaven revelation, not what the enemy sees, but what God sees. And so God is calling you up higher. Sometimes we, pro we pro prophesy out of flattery. It doesn't do anything. It falls to the ground, it rings hollow. Sometimes we bless people because we want them to notice us. You know, I, somebody asked me, what do we do if we raise someone from the dead? And I said, we leave town right away. We get out of town. I was really blessed in that the Lord taught me this for a while. I would pray for people. Supernatural miracle would happen, and I wouldn't know about it for about a year. We pray, but the results are his. We obey, we pray, the results are his. Yes. We have nothing to do with it but obey. And so God wants to get this in our heads. It's not my prayers. It's not what I've done. It's what he's done. It's always about him. We're just the vessels. But if I want to grab that little bit of glory and put it in my pocket, he can't use me any further. So we need to, uh, to look at ourselves so that we have evidence of, of our impurity. And one of those evidences is our lack of self-appraisal. We had a, we had a, listen, heard a story once that uh, Muhammad Ali was uh, on an airplane. And he was right at the height of everything and he was kind of full of himself. And, and, the, and the stewardess came up and said, uh, sir, I need you to put your seatbelt on. And he said, Superman don't need no seatbelt. And she leaned over to him and says, Superman don't need no airplane. 